In this video, we're going to have a look at how to personalize a title block and how to publish some drawings to save as PDF, which will allow us to print them out. In the last video, we looked at how to create from our 3D model, save view. So we created a save view of a site plan and a save view of a section, and we placed those onto our layout. So we've already got that information ready to go. Now, like I said in the last video, to understand our title block, we place our information, our drawing information of our title block onto our master layout. Now we can do those as referenced drawings and in other videos that I've been doing just recently, publishing on YouTube, I've been showing you how to do those as referenced drawings. Uh, most of this is just done as 2D line work placed onto this um, master layout page just to keep it simple and just to make it more easily um, related to or for you for your ability to interact with it uh, like I've said before the hashtags mean that these are auto text so we're not gonna mess with those too much because when we go to a saved drawing uh, layout we'll note that that automatically changes the name based on the ID and the name that we've used here. So we can see here that this one is IDA1000, so that's it there, and site location plan, that's it there. Because the name is long, it's actually gone over two lines. I'm cool with that. It's great that I, it can do that, and I've allowed enough space that that works well. Uh, there's nothing else, however, about this that's auto text except for the date. This date will also auto generate. Everything else, this is just text. And so I need to manually update this. Of course, I could do this so it was um, auto text. And if I wanted to make, for instance, the project name and the project address into auto text, I'd do that by going into File Info Project Info. And this is where I could put in all of this auto text data. And then if I clicked in here and then clicked on auto text, that's where I could choose from this information to be able to add auto text. So let's look at project detail, project name or site detail, um, site address or site address full. There's a lot of different options. A lot of these sort of double up as well. So it depends on how you want to write. Uh, now again, just to keep it simple, I've just used a couple of auto text and just done this as regular text uh, to, to not overcomplicate it for you. Now I've got a space here. Uh, this space is designed so you can put your own logo and your own details in. Uh, the other thing that you could do is rather than having to write new text, just copy what's here. So you could just drag this across, select all this. Let's put your own name. I'm going to use again caps, Robert Man. Uh, what I'd like you to do as well, this is for my students of course, is to um, put your email address. So your name and your email address. Let's put my business one here. So again, for my students, the point is here, put one that I can contact you via. Uh, if it doesn't fit on one line, what's the problem? Maybe it means that we're writing it too big. Now, I'm willing to go down to 1.5 text size here. If it doesn't allow you to do this, so this is based on the template settings or the uh, workspace settings, it doesn't allow you to change it here. Another way that we can change scale is using the scale tool or select, edit, reshape, um, resize, and I'm going to say 75%. And that's going to reduce it down to 1.5, even though it says 2 still, because that's rounding off to the, um, the closest millimeter. That's why it's working like that. Uh, and of course, you can put in a logo, and, and in previous videos, I, I've showed how to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, in the next video, we'll have a look at actually how to make a custom logo and to place it in there. For now that's enough information, we can just leave everything else that's there uh, and in the next video we might look at how to actually interact with some of this information and, and update it as well. What's wrong? We actually know that this north point is wrong as well. So um, let's change that one now. Now this north point was created just using lines. What we're going to do is we're going to exchange this one, so select and delete, for a automatic north point. 
So how do we find this? We could go searching through the Archicad libraries, but an easier way is to go into the search bar and type in north. Now that's going to find things that are in my library and it's also going to search the internet as well, which is very cool. So that's what that green box is about. So these ones here that have this little globe, they're the ones that are have been found on the internet and we can download uh, from online databases and so we would actually need to select this and download and embed it into our file. I'm just going to use this one here. This is the one that I want. I'm going to select it and press paste. That's interesting, isn't it? It's using some interesting lines. It's using a sketch line. And now that I've pasted it, I'm going to go into the settings and change those settings to be the way that I want. So let's go in and find out how that's representing, why that's representing the way that it is. We've always got two different ways we can change settings, <laughs> nearly always. So these are our general settings, and then we also have floor plan and section settings. So we have to be really careful that we're not overriding, and if we are overriding, we need to be happy with the settings that we're overriding. So currently we've got these both ticked, which means that's why we're getting overridden settings. I'm gonna change this to a solid line, and at the moment I'm gonna leave it overridden. Um, I'm going to also reduce the size of this down to 1000. It's a bit big still. Let's change this here to um, 10. A bit small, let's try 15. Uh, I don't want to have a north point. I'm going to call that zero. And now I could rotate it, but that's bad and that's not going to help me. So what I need to do in, in terms of understanding this as a object that's editable, I want to make sure that this is ticked to say follow north or follow project north. So this is based on my project north. So how do I now determine or set project north? First thing I'm going to need to do is find out where that actually is. So I drew this little diagram here or if I want to be more precise maybe I'll go to my survey. Now what I can do here is go into my options, work in project preferences, sorry, set project north and I'm going to tick, click and that's set my project north. Now when I go back to my master that's now going to reorientate that for me so that's now facing in the right direction. So that's great. So that means if we use this as a template from project to project, we can change that there in the settings, options, project preferences, and that's automatically going to adjust. Oh, one interesting note, we can't change that setting while we're in our um, layouts. We have to go to our project map or our view map into our model as opposed to our layouts to be able to edit that. So once we've got this done, we're now ready to be able to publish these. So we were using our site plan and our section. These are the two drawings that we're trying to do and we can see that this information is updated here. We've got our name and email address and our north point. Oh, we don't want a north point on our section, do we? That's a bit silly. So the way that I approach this is I could put this as an object on the individual pages that I want to view it or the other way around it is to hide it on the ones that I don't want to see. So I'm going to get a fill, I'm going to make that fill background white and I'm going to make sure I don't have a, an edge around my box or a line around my box. I'm going to put a fill over the top of that and I'm basically going to hide it. I could also of course extend that down to hide it saying north. So a little bit dodgy. Um, of course I'd need to do it one way or another. I either have to hide my north point or I have to only put the north point on plans. So one way or the other, it requires a little bit of editing per layout. I've done both options. This is the one I'm going to use for this instance. Now in order to publish this, I could do this in a few different ways. I could select this one view and I could just say file, save as or print. I could do it that way, but let's do it the, the proper way. In my project chooser, I'm going to open up this box here called Organizer. Now the Organizer allows us to break up our file or our viewer 
which is very much like our navigator into two different boxes. So this allows us to drag and drop effectively. So on my left hand side, I'm going to show my layouts and on my right hand side, I'm going to show my publisher. So this is my views. I can also delete the ones that are here and I'm going to re drag these across. So I'm going to drag across the site location plan and I'm going to drag across the sections. Now if I go up one level you're seeing I've already created this file. Uh, the template Archicads already create these for you as well. What is it? We have the ability to save files, print files, upload as BIMX. So we can do a lot of things with it. We could save multiple pages as one file. We could put things into a real folder structure. So if I had multiple subfolders, it would put those into subfolders. Or I can do flat file structure, which means it's just going to create each page as an individual PDF. That's what I want to do. Now I need to choose where I'm going to put this. Um, so I'm going to choose videos. Choose. Flat file structure, that's what we want. Go back into it. Choose both of the views that we want to publish. So they're selected and then publish selected items. Now that's going to save them as PDFs. Why didn't it like that? What's that little exclamation mark about? In my naming, I used a, uh, what's that called? A forward slash. Um, and the problem with that is that that is a, a command prompt um, and not really good for naming. So that's changed that for me. So if I go to the file, it saved it as uh, underscore instead. So don't worry about that little prompt. Obviously it might mean that I should probably change my forward slash to something else like a dash, but it's fine. So it's created both PDFs for me, my site location plan and my sections and then of course I could open this up and print it uh, for my students we will be printing this at A3 at 100% and this is going to allow us to use this for designing to be able to um, start to sketch over and to plan out our project.